Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live today for this episode of Talk Tuesday. Super excited to be with you today. I will be interviewing my roommate, my sister, my friend, Tiara Jackson, and I am super excited for you all to hear about her story, her journey, and uh, where our good sister is going next. If this is your first time tuning in, hello, welcome. Uh, we are going to talk to Tiara about her idea of success, uh, her career path, and the tips and motivators that she has used along the way. So Tiara is with us, so we will what? Get started. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Where are you guys joining? Hello. Oh wait, let me back up so you can see my shirt. Hold on. <laughs> you gotta see my shirt. Uh oh, are you representing the amateur expert? Who's that? Who who is that? I think that might be me. <laughs> hey girl. Hey, we got Virginia in the building. Hey Tad. Wait, is this a mirror? Because I have no idea how to mirror it so people can actually see the shirt. Nope. You I didn't know how to it, so it. up at the top. Oh, Up at the top, there's a button that says effects. It's the face with a little star. Oh, wait. Star. What am I? Uh-oh. You did uh -huh. the super zoom, so un perfect. Undo that. <laughs> yeah. So we have so that. Up at the top. Uh-huh. Hi, everyone. For sure. Up at the top, there's a button that says effects. You click that, and then you're going to slide at the bottom to go for the mirrored one. But also, oh. we've already acknowledged that. It's the amateur expert, and we don't have to. It's fine. No, Everything I, is fine. We are what? Perfectionists. We do things well in we, the street. We are, we are recovering perfectionists because... Recovering. Yeah, this is not going to work today because I don't know how to do it. It's okay. Also, I am saddened by the echo. Uh, this echo? Just a tad bit, but it's because it... Oh. oh, there she goes. That just that's perfect. You should probably just keep it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's giving. Yes. Okay. So here we are. Welcome back to the show. First of all, the fact that this is only my second time on the show I have an issue. Actually, it's your second time on the podcast. But we did do a few lives together. Did we? Yes. Remember, it was great. Anyhow, let's. I think we should be professional. Um, and okay. I think professional cap is on. As professional as we can. Yeah, yeah sure. I haven't had any, any wine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. We're both having these lovely <laughs> braids in our hair. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah. Because what time is of the essence? You are a busy woman, and I respect your your time. So, my love, if you could I please you my mm -hmm. introduce yourself, tell us who you are and what you're doing currently for work. Okay, hello, beautiful people. Happy Talk Tuesday. My name is um, Tierra, and currently, what I do for work, my nine to five is. Um, I work with a company in diversity, equity, and inclusion, specifically in strategy. So in my specific role, I focus on implementing strategic initiatives that are um, surrounding DEI within each organization. And then my six to whenever, I, her name is Kupa. My six to whenever is I am the CEO of this business called The Accountability Partner. Um, which is a coaching program and podcast that essentially aligns people with their goals and helps them do whatever it is that they need to do in order to reach them. So that is your good sis. Here we are. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, Tiara, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? And what was Ooh. the motivating factor behind that? Huh. You know what's funny is I think <laughs> – I, I want it to be a lot of things, right? Like one of my goals, and honestly, it's still to this day, one of my dreams is to be a background dance for Beyonce. Oh, um, it's already done. Happening. It, it, it's happening. That was one, like that was like my, my like, you know, side dream. Mm -hmm. But my main thing, I really wanted to be a juvenile defense attorney. Um, and kind of how that, Gina said I wanted to be a wizard. <laughs> 
kind of how that came about was <laughs> interestingly, interestingly enough, my mom told me and my sister told me that I was really good at arguing. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, okay, what are some good, you know, argumentative uh, roles? And my mom enrolled me in this like law program. And then I started doing that from there. So I'm the deucer. Okay. And um I don't want to comment on the fact that you may or may not be a good arguer so I'll just leave that on the table but what I do what I do want to ask you is what did you mm-hmm. think success was when you were chasing that goal that goal Ooh, I think success was for me um making everybody proud mm-hmm everyone else around me, like literally (laughs) fulfilling their desires of what it is that they thought I should be. That's what success looks like for me. And then two, money was a big, you know, driving force, like um, a little bit of background about me, right? My mom um, was a single mom at like when I was the age of 10. And so I saw her struggle a lot and I was like, oh no, I can't, I can't have myself be in this predicament, nor can I allow myself to see my mom and my family struggle in this capacity. And so a lot of the things that I did was one, to just, you know, get get money. Mm -hmm. And then two, success for me was making sure that everybody was pleased with the things that I was doing. So essentially not really my own fulfillment, but making sure that everybody else was, you know, satisfied with the things that I was doing. Yeah, okay. Um, And so- Can we just wait, can we kick Gina out? for a second because I am sick of her. <laughs> uh, what did she say? Uh, <laughs> um, I love Gina. Uh, okay, so also I want you not to act surprised by the questions because you literally have been on sitting the thing through. Is, I know all the questions but like, I don't think about it. I'm just like, huh, let me just, let's just go with what's what the Holy Spirit guide us, okay? Sure. Okay, spirit, <laughs> move us. Um, so, okay, so you are currently working at a company um, yes. <laughs> in a DI role, mm-hmm. um, which I would assume you're not doing much arguing verbally. Oh, my God. <laughs> Am I not doing much? Uh huh. Definitely not a lot no. of arguing. <laughs> right. And so I wonder. How did you get here, right? Like, what was what was the journey? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> you are incredibly annoying. Is this like an Oprah question? Jeez Louise. Okay, Devon. Um, what was the journey? I think a lot of it and what it had to do was self-discovery mm-hmm. and really trying to figure out what is it that I wanted. Like, what is it that I love to do? What is it that I desire to be? And what did I want my legacy to be? Um, and this journey kind of began in college. So shout out to Howard University, which is my alma mater. I enrolled at, you know, the only one in HU as a poli sci major because I was pursuing a degree and um, I was trying to get into law. Okay. But then I started interning with different law firms. And not only did I, you know, hate my job, all the lawyers that were in the office hated their job. So I was just like, hey, yo, God, is this really what I'm going to be doing? Like, um... I don't think so. Um, and so I really just started, you know, I took a step back and really started to self-reflect and like see what it is that I genuinely enjoyed. I loved money. I loved um, financial literacy. I loved helping other people. You know what? Let me, you know, enroll mm-hmm. in business school. This is something that I can transfer anywhere and I can always have a, make sure I have a job. So I ended up getting a degree in finance. I started out in a finance role that, but then again, and another part of life is just self-reflection. So I was mm-hmm. in this traditional finance role doing a lot of like mundane tasks, um, a lot of cyclical, you know, assignments. And I was like, nothing that I'm doing right now is really making an impact. Nothing that I'm doing is, say, is a part of like saving the world or making someone else's day happy or a lot helping right. someone else find their purpose. And so I started to figure out like, what does a corporate role look like for me? Because again, I genuinely just like working in corporate America. I know a lot of people aren't, aren't going to agree with that, but I'm, I'm corporate at, but, I mean, at heart. But, but, but we need people to do that. So I'm happy that you are one of them. Right. Because I think right. I have tapped out of that. But 
this is your story. But also, wait, I also want oh, to no, say we're gonna, that... We're going to revisit that. We're going to revisit that. <laughs> well, go ahead. What you got to say, please. But I, I also want to say that um, you didn't touch on this about your story in college, that, you know, the dream of being Beyonce's um, <laughs> background uh, dancer, right? I mm -hmm. think you might have aligned yourself with different communities in school to also yeah. fulfill that dream or um, a pleasure of yours? Yeah, so dancing for me is just a part of life. Like, I love to dance. Ashley knows, mm -hmm. so if you all don't know, Ashley's my roommate currently. And sometimes I just break out into dance. Like, I just love to drop the leg is hot, and I make Ashley, you know, in, indulge in my dancing passions as well. And so I decided to... Right. So I just decided to join different dancing organizations on campus, and that was kind of how I stuck with, like, my passion of eventually one day becoming mm -hmm. Beyonce's, you know, can you tag Beyonce? You think she's going to join? Maybe Let me go ahead have... and add Beyonce because she needs to join so I can, you know, do, what is what do they call it? Not a tutorial routine. What is it called? I, I can imagine. practice, showcase, what's the word? Audition? Audition! Okay, let's let's go back. You're working a mundane job <gasps> in oh, finance. <laughs> Jeez, that's the word. Yeah, at Beyonce because listen, I need to audition and get booked for the next Beachella. That needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. See, I appreciate people who are supportive of my dreams and my goals. <laughs> okay, sure. audition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're working this mundane job. Working this Monday, dang, no, I feel like I've just been like chatting. So I was working this Monday job, um, and I had to take some time to self reflect. I really, you know, let me align myself with one myself, but also two with God because I I do believe that our identity and our purpose really starts with Him. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started, I started praying a lot more, a lot more, just to understand like. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Because true fulfillment really comes from God. And I don't think people understand that. Like when you're really obedient, um, God will set things up for you so that ultimately like you're fulfilled in the end. And so I aligned myself with God and he just started to realize, he started to reveal to me that I genuinely have a heart for people. Like I love people. I love how the people align with their purpose. I love advocating for people. I love supporting people. Um, and then specifically how I got into this work in DNI, and i you know, given all the things that was happening with George Floyd and a lot mm -hmm. of the social and racial unrest that was going on, granted, it was going on all this time, but I think because we were all in quarantine, it was just in our faces a lot more. Um, and so I was like, you know, how can I just make a difference? Like, how can I use my voice in some type of way? And so I started looking into some d and roles, and here I am. I love that. So last time you were on the show, um, you expressed interest in, um, let's not talk about it, let's not talk about it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you were, <laughs> Last time you were on the show, you were in mm -hmm. a different role, right? Um, yeah. You were in a role that was um, more aligned with entertainment and films and things of that nature. Um, do you feel like um, the work that you're doing now is making more of an impact? And are you more fulfilled than um, are you more fulfilled now than you were in the role that you were doing before? Definitely way more fulfilled. Um, for those who don't know me, like I'm an extreme extrovert, and in my old role. First of all, I think people, finance roles are meant for people who don't want to talk to anybody. They're meant for, like, just stoic people, people who are not fun, don't have a lot of energy. Um, actually, that's, well, whatever. But, no, I was, I was not fulfilled in that role. I do believe that I'm genuinely making more of an impact in this role, period. Okay. So you about to have me start rambling. <laughs> so what is your idea of success today? The thing, what's crazy about this is, like, I know all of these questions, right? All Should of I have them. Probably you're thought about them? Literally in every Should single Should I have thought about them ahead of time? Probably. So, my idea of success now, 
it's a couple things. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's genuine happiness and fulfillment in what it is that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and not really concerned about what anyone else thinks about it. Like, as long as I'm happy and the whole world is mad, I don't care because you're good to be happy. Um, I also think, too, aligning myself with God and, like, purpose, mm-hmm. that's, fulfilled, that's um, success to me. Yep. And then lastly, the thing I'll say is, like, a true impact. Like, making an impact because it's really not about me. Like, the things that we do is so much bigger than us. Um, and we shouldn't live and go about each day trying to service ourselves if we aren't doing anything to help solve a problem or to help make someone's life easier then you ain't living a life right boo you ain't living and that's on what right mary out of the land boo okay so tell me what um is something that you have learned or something that you're still in the process of learning that you wish you would have learned sooner that the the pains of others do not matter (laughs) People, oh, the opinions. The opinions of others don't matter. Um, everyone's journey is different. And on the note of like, you know, people's opinions, I used to be such a people pleaser. Like literally every single thing that I do would be to get some type of accolade or approval from someone else or um, to get their, again, again, get their sense of approval. But now it's just like, life will go on like people really don't care that much about you like I like I promise you people could really care less about the things that you're doing yeah. um and so I, I held so much weight in on people and then I ultimately people had such a strong hold over myself um and I was just like now nah, I, got, I gotta break that strong hold so the pains of others don't matter and then you cannot compare your journey to somebody else's because everyone uh-huh. else's start point is different the process is different God what God has for you is what God has for me and vice versa yeah so I think I want to challenge you a little bit to think your first point through a little bit further no yes so (laughs) I think I don't know that it's fair to say the opinions of others don't matter they don't as a complete sentence okay I'm I'm open to the idea of hearing your (laughs) Hearing your opinion. <laughs> Hearing my opinion. You see what I'm saying? I think But I'm open to it. <laughs> I think that it's important to hear others' opinions. And I think it's important to make your own decision based off mm-hmm. of what you and God have decided. Um, yeah. But I do think that it's okay to hear other people's opinions. I mean, I think it's okay to hear people's other opinions, but uh, I think to your point, allowing that to be the driving force of what I do, that's where I draw the line. Because um, right. if God tells me, hey, Tira, I need to move to Mexico, and everybody else is like, Tira, that is the dumbest thing you, ever, you could have ever done. You think I'm going to listen to y'all because y'all said uh, it's, it's dumb? No. Oh, right. I'm moving right. to Mexico. Right. I do Correct. That is so that is sort of that's I think that was the point. I think I wanted you to maybe just expand the thought a little bit because that could be potentially damaging to someone if that's all they heard. I get it. No, that makes sense. No, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. Okay, so when are we moving to Mexico? Can we go to Mexico? Also, can we talk about our trip in Mexico? Can I ask you a question? No. <laughs> so what? <laughs> what is your idea of success today, actually? So I think my idea of success changes every day. Um, no, I don't think. I know my idea of success changes every day. Um, overarching, my I think success is creating a goal and achieving it. But okay. I also know that there are times where I create a goal in my flesh that is in, in alignment with what God has for me or mm-hmm. what I think could be smaller and God could have something bigger or whatever the case may be, right? So mm-hmm. I'm weary to say that it's making a goal and accomplishing it because sometimes you don't a- accomplish their main goal. I think success is sometimes depending on the day right and I've expressed this before um for me when I was going through the divorce success was 
waking up, taking a shower and going to work because there were many days where it was just waking up and going to work or not going to work at all. So I think yeah. that we have to give ourselves our, our self different measures. Um, but I think success is, is is inward and I think it can change it can change daily so my only thing in terms of it changing daily right makes everything that you just said makes sense and I, I totally understand it but my only thing like what if what if it changing daily causes you to be unfulfilled because you feel like if you're not achieving the goal for the day then I'm not successful like I, how, I how does that work? So I think that, I think for me, I have to realize that my success shouldn't be content or feeling successful shouldn't be contingent on accomplishing a goal because I don't know if the goal is something I've decided to do in my flesh, right? And so I think it's important mm -hmm. to show gratitude, right? And then so like, and reflect on the day and then you can pinpoint what was a success, right? But yeah, um, I think I'm looking at it at a more micro or mi micro mm -hmm. level, right? As a micro mm -hmm. instead of macro, because um, I think I, I am a recovering perfectionist, right? I am a people was a people pleaser, right? And so was for it. me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have to take it down to a smaller level. Like success is ultimately it's, it's happiness, it's finding fulfillment. Um, but and how do you and how do you define those things, right? So we can keep. No, ma'am. So it's, I don't know if you can see up at the top. It says meeting Tiara Jackson. So we are going to go on to our next question. question. My for question you. for you is: You mentioned mm -hmm. a lot about happiness and what that looks like, or not even what that looks like, mm -hmm. um, but you mentioned a lot about mm -hmm. happiness. So I just want to ask you: You know, what is what does happiness look like for Ashley, Ethan? <laughs> What is this? I'm asking a question shoulder dance that we're doing. Um, I don't know that I have a clear cut definition. I think happiness is a feeling. Um, and there are things that I do or there are things that I hear, there are things that I read, there are things that I see that give me that feeling mm -hmm. um and then there are things that I do there are things that I see there are things that I read mm -hmm. that take that feeling away so I don't know that there is a clear-cut definition um to what happiness is um hey cache but um I think that's how I could explain it today I agree I just think we have to get in, into a, a better habit of like saying that this is the thing that we want and identifying what that actually looks like. Because we can always say like, hey, I want success. Hey, I want happiness. Hey, I want joy. But what does that actually look like for Ashley? What does that look like for Tierra, Amanda, and Jackson? Mm -hmm. It's a process. So, so maybe you should share with us what does happiness look like for Well, you, you know, I think happiness is a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I do believe that happiness is a feeling and part of me wants to say that it's a choice i do think um, you have to choose but i think that can be like a controversial statement because there can literally be so much like negative stuff happening around you and you just saying you know i'm happy with what's happening and you're literally not um so i think like you said to your point it's really an inward it's a feeling it's like true fulfillment joy is understanding that I'm aligned with purpose it's understanding that no matter what happens around me that because I'm aligned with God because I'm you know in my purpose then I'm on the right path and I think that's what happiness for me looks like well thank you for sharing that and taking <laughs> total control over the interview yeah. and I'm just gonna sort of reel us back in a little bit get, get us back together mm -hmm. so dear um, what are some of the tips and motivators that you use um, and have used along your career path? Um, I know that faith is super important to you um, and your relationship with uh, your big dog as you big, uh, the big homie affectionately call him. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wonder if you can share um, 
I want to say aside from your faith, because I, I think you should touch on it. But in addition to that, what are some of the things that you use as tips and motivators? I think for me, something that is really important for me is your your circle. And uh, as you know, we're all on this journey towards purpose. We should really be constantly evaluating the people who are like closest to us. Mm. Because ultimately, what's, what's the quote? It's like you're the sum total of the people you hang around. Sure, so we'll if, go with that. <laughs> right. So if you're hanging around a lot of people who are just speaking negatively or negative um, facts or just statements into your life, then what is that going to be? You produce a negative result. If you're around people who are constantly uplifting you, then that's only going to propel you into purpose, into the things that you're supposed to do. So I think for me, my friends, my family, my support system is key. And then I think gratitude as well is, is critical, you know, along this journey. Like taking the time to smell the roses and reflect on, wow, like I'm actually doing it. Like I, I may not be at point Z, but I've gone from A to E. And that's progress. And I need to celebrate that. Do you choose those letters specifically? Or... I did it! <laughs> the amateur expert. Oop, oop. Oh, and one okay, thing so... I would say. Oh, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Nope. My bad. No, um, I was, I think I told you, I was on a clubhouse room, and there was this you woman who, you know, yeah. I was on a, in a clubhouse room, and we were talking about um, tackling imposter syndrome or, or something along the lines of that. And there was this woman who was speaking. She was like, a way that she tackled it was writing what is called, sorry, mom, but I have to curse. This is not my words, it's the girl's words, but it was writing a badass list. Okay. And a badass list is literally identifying everything about you that makes you a badass. So if you're a giver, if you, you graduated from college, like you have a great support system, like you pour into mm-hmm. others, all these, you've written a book, you started a podcast, all these. All of these things make you what is called a badass, and you have to constantly keep that at the forefront of your mind, um, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to times and moments of imposter syndrome, because we tend to forget, like, how dope we are. Yeah. We're dope people. We're doing dope work, and we can get so caught up in not achieving a certain goal that we forget to reflect, like, wow, I've accomplished so much. Mm-hmm. So that's what we can all add. That's good. And one of the things I want to touch on um, – is your circle right and I think um I want us to talk briefly about Mm -hmm. how as we are becoming in more alignment with our purpose sometimes our circle changes Mm -hmm. and sometimes Mm -hmm. our circle gets bigger and sometimes it gets smaller um and I know that you know I've had friends or I probably I've had (laughs) Savannah has been my best friend since preschool. Um, but there also <laughs> there was also a period of time when we didn't speak, right? She went to a different college and blah, 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 blah. Um, but the friendship remained, we just weren't as close. Um, but then I can I can physically see like the groups and pockets of friends that I've had over like the years. And um I always am jealous of people who are like, oh, this is my three best friends from blah, 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 Mm because I I don't have that. And so I just want to know from you, um, what are your thoughts on um, your circle changing? It's difficult. It's difficult when you, there are people who you love that you want to bring with you to this new chapter or this new level that God is trying to take you. But Mm -hmm. oftentimes, I think that we don't realize, like, it can be, and I hate to use this word, but sometimes the people in your circle can be dead weight. And they can be the ones, like, holding us back from really launching into what it is that we need to to be. Because you'll be surprised. You'll be plotting on your your downfall. What did, what did, uh, who was was the, was it T. Grizzly? These niggas praying on my downfall? Who said that? Uh Mom, she's sorry again. She didn't mean to say these niggas be these <laughs> niggas be praying on your downfall. Um, and so I think when you notice that sometimes friendships are shifting or drifting, I think we have to accept it. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to cut that friend off completely. It just means that the friendship is going to be changed. Like it's just going to change. So instead of talking to someone a million times a day, I'm only going to talk to them once a week. Like Raj said, everybody can be VIP, and that's okay. 
okay, it's tough, and I think you should allow yourself time to grieve that process. Because, again, it's like losing a best friend, losing anybody close to you is, is difficult. So take that time to grieve, but also understand, like, how, what it's for. Like, what is the result of this, this you know, split? Because that's essentially what it is. The result is, you know, now I'm, I'm going to be moving into a new level, and there's going to be different people who are going to be for me. There's different people who are going to help me get to yeah. – this next level because what every person is for a specific season and sometimes season change for sure it's so true and I think I can I remember losing friends that I thought were the group that were lifers right that were like my mm -hmm. sisters that I was gonna have forever um and I kid you not as those friendships ended new friendships uh came out of nowhere Right? And, and they were what you needed. Exactly what I needed. You're welcome. I was not talking about you. Yes, you or were. Maybe, okay. Or maybe I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why it's important for us to have this conversation because over the course of your career, over the course of your, um, <laughs> Gina said, no, no sweet seats. They are still seats and they can still see. And that's why I try not to block them on social media. We're not going to go there. Sometimes you have to block them. <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes you have to block Some, people because again, yeah. you got to protect people. People be out here making fake pages that used to be your friend and will be in your comments trolling you or just doing a whole bunch of nonsense. Listen, I am a, I am a firm believer in the block. Okay, I think the block is essential. The block, I think, is somewhere in the Bible. Like God talks about blocking people on Instagram, and that is that. I, go ahead. I, Sorry, I cut you off. I do think that sometimes it's important to block people to protect your peace, but I also sometimes think it's important for them to be able to see uh, what you got going on in your life. But what God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's how dope that is. He'd be like, oh, I'm going to be petty too with you, and what? Let me go ahead and let, you, let them see that you're making these millions, that you're happy. Saying. I'm just saying. But, okay, sorry, now I have to reel myself back in. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so um, let's talk about, in addition to sometimes having your circle change, sometimes your location has to change. I'm doing the ride chain right now. Sometimes mm -hmm. your location has to change. And I experienced that um, in my move to California. Um, and it was something that I didn't think I ever would do. But when the time came, um, it was necessary for me to be in a new location, to meet new people, and to have, I think, just a new experience. Um, uh, and so I want to know, what are, what are your thoughts on changing location? I think you need to go wherever God tells you to go. And it, it's just as simple as that because you never know what's waiting for us when we get there. God mm -hmm. knows the end from the beginning. He knows what you like. We don't, we literally don't know anything. We're idiots. Like, we're idiots. We're stupid. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And there's a scripture that's my favorite scripture, which is trust. Oh, what's the word? Hold on. It's oh. My favorite scripture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. But in all ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path, right? And so I think transition period is difficult. Mm -hmm. But when you understand that you are operating under someone who literally knows the end from the beginning, whose plans for you are to prosper you, if God told me to move to Alaska, I'm going to have an attitude about it. But the good sis is going to be freezing with her ugly son, looking cute with her fur, yeah. In Alaska. Yeah. I mean, I have a brother there, so you'd have at least some hey, type of family. How, how old is your brother? Mm -mm. I was just, I was making the statement so that you would know that there is someone that you could have that would be like a familial connect. Yeah. And to your point, um, I'll just, you know, share what's going on with me. I'm currently in the process of a transition. I have been living in LA for the past two years now, and I specifically got instructions to move to D.C. Like, as clear as day, go to D.C. So I'm like, mm -hmm. 
okay, like I, I love DC. I'm from DC. I love the brunch in DC. Shout out to the society. Shout out really, to that the is what you talk about. You literally talk about brunch over society, everything. Society brunch in DC. They have curry crab legs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is what I'll be doing when I go on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently in a transition. God told me to move to DC and I was like, hey yo, I need I need confirmation. And it's just like I would get little things here and there, but again, right? Like what did Lori say? We not into your own understanding, and that's mm-hmm. definitely not what I was doing. I was like, but that don't make sense. Like this this he it could mean this or it could mean that. Um, but today God just confirmed like this is what you need to be doing, this is when you need to go, and that's just that's just what it is. It's tough. It's hard. Like I'm sad I'm leaving you. I'm sad I'm leaving LA. But I know that God has provision for me in DC, and I gotta take what's mine. You gotta go. And also, you can always come back to visit Hi, because Patsy. the Lord has what not told me to leave yet. Anyhow, I'll be uh, back okay, for so DC those... Awards weekend. Right, because Raj is going to get us in. Just throwing that out there <laughs> with the lead in. I just want my sidebar. I just want my cameo on the sisters. I'm putting that out there, Raj. From my lips to God's ears, from my lips to Raj's ears. I just want to be on sisters. So that's that. I think I love that for you. And I can't <laughs> wait for us to have a viewing party. Okay. Um, where are we in this in this in this interview? Uh <laughs> First of all, you're right. Like my bad, Raj. We we threw all of the information. Let's really there. We can we can redact that from from the interview. Um, Brandon, if you're listening, please <laughs> take out Raj's place of work or not place of work. Yes. Anyhow, mm-hmm. nothing. Sierra, I think you know that I love you, and oh, I right. am super grateful and thankful for our friendship and. You know what? It's indescribable. <laughs> <laughs> Unmeasurable. That's where I'm mm-hmm. um, <laughs> um, But what I will say is that I'm incredibly proud of you. I know that um, during this transition that it wasn't the easiest thing to surrender to. So I'm proud of you for taking this leap and doing what you're called to do. Um, I want to talk to you, or I want you to talk to us about the accountability partner and um, how that was also, um, you know, a move of obedience on your part um, and share with us sort of how that came to be um, and what you are doing with that brand. So the accountability partner kind of like fell into my lap almost, and God just confirmed that this is something that he'd be doing. So for those who are close to me know that I insert myself as everyone's accountability partner. Like, if you tell me you, you want to do something, okay, let's, let's set a deadline for it. Now I'm I, don't think every- I don't think it's less than a deadline. I'm pretty sure you set the deadline, but I'm sure. Sorry. Sure. Okay. I, set, I go ahead and set the deadline because what I'm making sure that my friends achieve what they want to achieve, that they say that they're going to do what they want to do. Um, and that's honestly something that brings me fulfillment, right? Like whenever I see my friends winning, when I see them succeeding, like that brings me true happiness. Mm-hmm. Also, sidebar, do not have anyone in your circle who does not celebrate you, who does not support you, who is in the corner jealous of you. No, you do not need that type of energy in your life. A lot of um, So yeah, that's kind of the role that I played in a lot of my relationships. And... Uh, God would just drop certain things in my spirit. Like, I started doing these devotionals. I started, you know, this podcast last year called Unwind Wednesday. And then, again, God gave me a dream and was like, yo, this is, this is what you need. This is what the brand needs to be. You're the accountability partner. That is what I put you on this earth to do, to hold people accountable. And that made me realize, like, I started doing a lot of research, and the number one reason why people don't, attain, like, achieve their goals is because of a lack of accountability. And it's not just, you know, external accountability, but also personal accountability. Mm-hmm. Like, think about it. We'll set, we'll give ourselves, you know, a deadline to achieve a specific goal, 
and we'll start doing those things. Like we'll start the business and we'll be consistent for maybe like a month or two and then things will start to trickle down. But then there's like what happens after that. There's no one holding them accountable. Uh, You're not holding yourself accountable. Uh Uh-oh, can you hear me? You froze for a second. Uh Uh-oh, I I see you. you. Okay. Um, But yeah, there was, there's no one holding, you know, themselves accountable and that's when I was like you know what this is something that needs to take place especially with 2020 I think we realized like life is short and if the time is now for people to really start doing what it is that God called you to do it's now and so um, I have a podcast called the accountability partner where I provide different tangible tips and strategies to help people achieve their goals both business and personal and then on a side I have an accountability accountability coaching program and business coaching program that does the same exact thing. Also, tune in to the Accountability Partner Podcast. This last episode was on preparation and how God only blesses what you prepare for. So it's time for us to get it together. Yes, I agree. And the last episode was really good. Actually, all the episodes have been good. Um, I love what you're doing with the brand. Also, I always tell Tara and I pray often. And... Yeah. Um, well, someone will say amen, and then <laughs> someone thinks of an addendum, right? Or like, oh, wait, and also that? <laughs> and so as you were talking about the type of person that you need in your friend circle, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, and you should not have <laughs> um, yes men, right? You need someone who's going to tell you, nah, dog, no, that's not a good look, or not this probably shouldn't do that um and then you also should have a prayer warrior or someone that you can pray with um in your circle um I think that's all I got for now well yeah I I think that's all true like having friends that pray for you I don't think people understand like how powerful that really is like having people who are genuine and genuine and seeing you succeed and will do what they need to do by any means necessary to see that whether it's praying whether it's supporting whether it's like booking you a flight somewhere or buying you an llc like truth like I, and i tweeted about this the other day like i am so grateful for my support system because i know that they are for me shout out to my sisters shout out to you shout out to we like shout out to the support system because if it weren't for them if it weren't for the people really like in my corner rooting and cheering me on, I wouldn't be where I am today. I I agree. Um, I agree. My brain is going a million places and I'm trying to shut it down. Okay, so people can book you for a session. Yep. Um, how do they do that? <laughs> Raj should not feel attacked right now, um, sis. Um, so you can you can book a session at www.518rebirth.com. I'm currently going over under a rebrand. Like I just purchased the accountabilitypartner.co domain. The process of like creating the website, you know, is it Ashley Cans at this point? So uh, <laughs> I was like, um, is that what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. So I'm looking forward to that project. That's something that we're trying to figure out. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us, Bragg, with the people that I'm about? Ooh. There were- oh. So I'm sponsoring two women or men with a copy of the Living Single book, which with which is authored by my good sister Lisa. It's a devotional, thirty day devotional for um women who are single and want to find a husband. And there's a lot of women I know who are single and want to find a man. I didn't say, actually, first of all, can you talk about, I already on the book, so. Can you talk about how important it is to have, like, a good man in your corner? A man that's just big and strong and okay, fine. So, okay, all right. So, that phrase, yeah, okay. that so, eats food. Yeah, like, I, I, can't mm-hmm. do, I can't do the men that don't eat food. Like, if you don't, what are you doing? That's big and fine. How did we get here? I just love okay. black food. So, they're so freaking yummy. Okay, I'm done. Yes. Yes, they are. Um, retweet. Also, so, okay, round, wrapping up to our last question. Yep. I am who, 
the amateur expert, and I what? Know a little bit about a lot. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, <laughs> right, right. So then you definitely made a, made a sharp, a sharp <laughs> turn. Okay, so I'm the amateur expert, and I know a little bit about a lot. And so, Tiara, if you could please share with me, share with us, a random tidbit of information. Um, I'm not going to say the rest. The thing is, I literally know you ask this question all the time, and I probably should have something prepared. Uh, ah! Yeah. 50% of car crashes in the United States are due to speeding. Due to? Wait, 50% of car crash fatalities are due to someone else speeding. And well, that US is... Because <laughs> you know what I've been doing for the past two days. <laughs> I mean, also, that is a fact that I did not, I did not you, know. The American <laughs> so thank spent, you for sharing that. No, Americans have spent $40.5 billion. Uh, and what was it on? Thing I can remember. But it was something along the lines of like reckless driving, speeding. I can't think of what it was. Well, I thought we might have ended on a high note, but <laughs> here, here we are. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know what I would like? I would like for... Oh, no, stop. you're frozen. I was going to say I would like for us to stop freezing. I know, I see you now. Okay, so I think what I would like is for us to, for you to close us out with a prayer. I would love to, however... <laughs> Go. My, my my head is sad. My hands can are we, Nope. Can we talk about <laughs> no Sweetie and Quavo? Why can't we talk Let's, about it? I, this is what I think we should do. I think we need to wrap up this <laughs> conversation and I think that we should go yeah, live okay. later. And I think okay. we should have a conversation and bring people in. Asha, keep us on brand. Hi, Jerry. We're doing well. How are you doing? Jerry? Yes. Okay. Brandon, please cut all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone, everyone by their heads, I'm going to pray us out. Also, Ashley, is there anything specifically you need prayer for before I close this out? Yes. Actually, I need um, a new roommate. <laughs> That is a line of the a line of you with roommates. Bride is mm -hmm. on her way. Twin is probably on her way. It's happening. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, in your precious name, Lord God, we just thank you for who you are. Thank you for being our father. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being our provider, Lord. Right now, we just we just honor and exalt your name. And I want to cover every single person on this live. I pray for their strength. I pray for their prosperity. I pray that. This message and, and Ashley's podcast not only continues to touch people, but she's able to be exalted in such a way that reaches the masses. So, Lord, I pray for her expansion. I pray for Amen. That that was beautiful. Um, so I'm going to get back to work and we will be on live later today discussing the video. Also, we need to be cute and be still for our still. Five? No, ma'am. You are not being my accountability partner right now. Currently, we are taking a photo. Ready? Perfect. Thank you all for joining us. This has been quite the episode. Quite a ride. Have a great, quite a ride. Uh, Shout out to Brandon. Tuesday and we will Shout see out to Brandon because he's going to cut all this. All of it. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.